Right, good morning. Uh, we're back with this uh, Kramer neck that I had all well, the deep whelps and the grooves in there, which uh, I fixed yesterday, and um, it's going to be an update on that. But just before I do get on with that, this is a little bit of a shout out to Simon Morton, uh, a gigging musician, a new client to mine. He bought me two guitars this week. That happy with the first one. He bought his, his uh, favourite guitar back the next day. And uh, when he came to collect it, not only did he pay me, and not only was he happy with the work, he also left me a lovely bottle of Montino here. A 2011 reserve bottle, which I'm sure is going to be very, very nice. We love a good red whale, me and my missus, so uh, we're going to have that tonight. So cheers, Simon, for that. And he also wanted to know, though, he says, keep me up to date with this. He wants to know how it goes. So let me show you. I've stained it with some uh, Rustin's wood dye, uh, ebony wood dye. And it's come out absolutely brilliant. Now, I will turn it round. You probably see the bits I've filled, um, which are because this is really a bit, a bit glossier. You've got this fret, this fret, this fret. Uh, you can see it burnt with the stain on, and when it's on, the, you can see it there. But once it's on the guitar and with the strings on, you're not going to see that. Absolutely wonderful job. I'm absolutely pleased as punch where it's come out, and with the stain, it looks absolutely beautiful. It's super smooth. There's a couple of tiny little grooves in there which I'm going to um, I'm going to drop fill I'm going to put a, a little adapter on me super glue and I'm going to just put tiny droplets in there just to fill that out and also I went across here and I, I slipped with a file across here so I'm going to steam that little line out there we'll get it perfectly flat and what I'm going to do is I'm going to refret this just show it's the right neck look made in Japan by ESP it's a Kramer Focus 3000 uh, with a chicken beat head stop which was only in production from 82 to probably the beginning of 84 so we date this I think I quite safely say it's about it's an 83 model um, beautiful piece of wood uh, the only problem I had with this is it's not a problem it's look how thin the rosewood is it's why I didn't want to take any material off it was more like a veneer than a uh, rosewood board but that said it's not to worry about because the rigidity of the neck is in the neck itself so absolutely fine. I can't wait to get this guitar back together. Like I say, I'm going to do a refret today. And the wire I'm going to use is Hosco wire. Now Hosco are a Japanese company. So I know this is good quality gear. And it's not regular nickel silver. Nickel silver mix alloy is normally 12% nickel. This is actually 18% nickel. So it's going to be a bit tougher than regular fret wire. It's going to sit between regular fret, soft fret wire and um, stainless steel. So it's going to be a little bit harder to work with, but it's going to be absolutely fine. Like I say, Hosco make tools like these nut files that are absolutely brilliant. They're super sharp, will stay sharp forever. They cost me 75 quid and are worth every penny. This fret wire, jumbo, jumbo fret wire. So it's going to be the actual width is 2.8 millimeters and the height of the fret, basically from the fret board to the top of the fret is 1.3 mil. So it's going to give us a lot of. In the future, we'll get a couple of redresses out of that. The tank itself, I'm not sure what that is, about 1.6. I imagine it's about, it's going to be about 3 mil high, including the tank. The tank's going to be about 1.6, 1.7 I maybe a bit more. So beautiful, beautiful fret wire. Long lasting, hard wearing. So I'm going to get that on there, uh, start that job today. So that's really is it. This looks absolutely wonderful. Really, really pleased we are to come out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a refret. I've took I've took it off the jig and off a piece of wood because it's easy for me to do a refret just like this, just with the neck on its own. I'm going to semi. I'm going to hammer the ends of the fret wire in, and I'm going to use my drill press with the um, with the uh, what's the right word I'm looking for with the call on there, right call, 12 inch call, and we'll get them all pressed in nice and tight. I'm going to super glue them in as well, which I don't normally glue frets in, but on this I'm going to glue them in because it's going to be long lasting, we're not, we're not going to need to come out again. And once that's all done, once they're all in, we'll let it settle for a bit and um, and I'll just check the level and we'll give him a bit of a, if you need to skim across the top, we'll do that. So I'm going to crack on with that today. Uh, what a fantastic project this is for me, working on one of my own guitars. I can't wait to get this back together because I absolutely love playing it. It's the only super strat I've got, it's the only Floyd Rose guitar I've got. Uh, and. Say I paid £140 for this and I'm putting in a few hours. Well, I don't, I'm not paying myself, am I? But if you'd have bought this for 140 quid, then you have a refret and all that and all the work done on it. And you're looking at it, it's going to cost you four or five hundred quid for the whole lot. Well, I'm not paying myself to do a refret. So by the time this guitar's done, it would have cost me probably 165 quid for the whole lot. Because I really can't complain for a 1983 Craver Focus 3000 that plays 
as good as anything I've ever owned in, in 35 years. So there you go. So that's it, I'm gonna blow on that. I've got some other jobs to do. Um, I'm gonna be non-stop today, because I've got a full day. Uh, Michelle's going out, she's gonna be at church at four o'clock-ish. Um, she's not gonna be back till gone seven, so, so I've got all that time to myself, plus I've got that time when she's away, be brilliant. Um, I might have sport on the background, but I'm gonna really cram some guitars, and I'm planning to do one, two, three, if I don't complete three, well, I'm planning to do four. If I don't complete four, I'm planning to get three done and one started. So that's it. Uh, I'll be back with this Kramer when I've got it refretted and we'll start getting the guitar back together. And um, but until then, good to each other and I'll see you soon. Right, Cool Beans, back with this uh, Kramer Focus Neck, which I'm just about to refret. Now, it's something I'm going to show you because I've not done it for a long time. Um, and I'm going to show you. I would bend the fret wire, and I've got the fret wire here, and you know it's Hosco fret wire, I've already mentioned that, and I've got it radius to round about 14, just a bit more a bit more of a radius than I actually need. In fact, it's about 30, it's very, very close to where it needs to be. There you go, so I don't know what you can see there. And how we put them in is, you can see on the end of here, I've got these calls here, and they're grooved, and this is set to a 12 radius. I've got loads of these, got a full set of them, and this sits in, my pillar drill, and when I pull the pillar drill down, this goes boom and stamps it in. So that's what I'm going to get, get on with. But I'm going to show you how we bend the fret wire. And to show, here we go, we've got a piece of straight, we get four frets per piece of this. So I've got that's that piece here. Got a fret bending machine here on an adjuster, and this wheel goes up and down and it locks at the back. These two bearings don't move, these either side, and they spin freely. Then we move this up down the back until we get the radius for one. And all we do is, I'm going to show you, I'm going to place the fret wire in there. Just get it in position. We've got it in position. There you go. And all I'm going to do is, I'm going to turn this lot, and you see it's going to bend the fret wire to the radius I want. I'm going to turn it back round because I'll just pull it through. And what I do is then I thread it through the opposite end and I put the other end in. And again, I thread that through like so. And that's it. And that's it, we've got it through. And that should match the ones I've already got done. Doesn't actually, it's a little bit less, so what it is, I'm going to just bang it through again. Bang it through a couple of times. Again, this way. And that's it, and that is now bent to the radius I need. If you have a look at the other piece, they're all bent, same radius look. I can always put a little bit more tighter one in there. I've got two more to do, and that's it. And it's going to be bent, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut each individual fret as I put them in, because what I'm doing is I'm, I'm gluing them in. So I'm going to do them one at a time. So I'm not going to, normally, I'd cut all 22 or 21 or however, however many it is I've got and we'd number them all and we'd place them in a certain place, but I'm not going to do that, I'm going to cut each fret individually. And there you go, so that's basically it. I'm going to take... I might just give a little bit tighter radius on this, because it's probably not quite as much, it's probably bang on 12. I like a little bit more, because what we do is we bang the edges in, and once the edge is in, the top's going to stick out, then we bang the top down a bit more. So I'm going to go a bit tighter on that radius, so I'm going to alter this little fret bending jig here. The good thing about this as well, it's always straight, also straighten fret wire. You have to put it, basically you put it in through here and through there, and it bends it the opposite way. So I can straighten fret wire, if, I, if I've got too much of a bend in there, I can always straighten it as well. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to whiz round to the um, drill press, I'm going to turn the camera there actually. I'm sure I've got the drill press already set up. And with it, there you go, we're right there. So that's already set up, just a drill press. All I'm going to do is... I'm going to bang that in there. I'm going to get it basically, straighten it up. One wrong way. Yep. I don't have to use a chuck key, and basically, that's it. 
not as straight as I want it to be, I'll straighten that up. Okay, I'll get the chuck key. Bear with, because I've got no idea where that chuck key is. It could be in here somewhere. No, it's not. I know where it is. It'll be in. I've got it in a drawer somewhere. I can't get that straight, isn't it? There you go. Exactly where we want it. Basically, we're going to do. We're going to get fretting. Got a piece of wood on here. Get this all leveled out where I want it. We're going to get the fretting. We're going to get it lined up. And once it's lined up, all we're going to do is we're going to press it down and we're going to press the frets. So that's basically. What I'm going to be doing this afternoon. Um, that's what I'm going to be going on with. Like I said, I'm going to slightly alter, but if I get a bit of a tighter radius, I'll show you how I do that basically. What I'm going to do is I'm going to undo the back. I'm going to turn this one quarter turn, loosen it, and that's pushed this wheel a little bit closer down there. It means I'm going to get a slightly bigger bend. There you go. Beautiful, and that's what I'm going to do with all this. Get it all in there. Slightly bigger radius. It means I'm going to go a little bit tighter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we'll be just over 12 there. Absolutely fine. It means when I put the edges in, the top's going to be sticking proud of it. Then I'll get it in the press, and we'll press it in. I'm going to glue everyone in, just with a little bead of uh, super glue down the centre there, just to hold them in place. And um, that really is going to be it. So there you go. So I've got all the tools. I had to buy this specially. Not a cheap piece of kit, but this will last. It'll last forever. Oh, it'll last a lifetime. Not as long as I need it to. I bought this from Canada a couple of years back. I think it cost sixty odd pound. A great piece of precision kit. I can get it mounted on somewhere if I want to. I just got hold it in my hand, it's job done. So that's it really. I am now, I've got a great day today. Leeds United are just one staff noon. Uh, everyone knows I'm a Leeds United supporter. I used to go to all the games up until a few years ago, till I got sick of spending the money. And um, and I'm not really into football fans, truth be told. You know, it's too much racism, too much hooliganism. And I'm not, my life doesn't suit that anymore. Not that I was a hooligan or a racist. It's just, it doesn't suit my life where my life's gone. So, so I don't go football anymore, but I always follow Leeds United still. We just one afternoon we've gone to fourth from the table, so that's something to be happy about. Always cheers me up when Leeds win. So that's it. Gonna blob on, gonna fiddle about with guitar this afternoon. I've got a whiz off because Michelle wants to vacuum and uh, I said I'm doing a video, you can't vacuum yet. She wants to vacuum before she goes to church. She's got some time at church between four and seven today. So that's that. So I'm gonna blob on. I'll get back to you soon. Have a great weekend. Right, good afternoon. It's Sunday afternoon. Um I don't work Sundays, or I'm not working this Sunday, so um, it's going to be a brief uh, video, but all I'm going to do is going to show you that I've done the refret on the um, on the Kramer there. I'm going to zoom in. You can see I've, now I've got it all jigged up. Now you can see the refret is not complete yet. Got the frets in. I've not cut the edges or anything yet. We're just there. We're just in. And what I'm going to do next is, you see, I've got it on the jig now. I've got it all jigged up. I've got the dials zeroed out. Because what we don't want this to move now, we've got it all strapped in, we've got everything zeroed out, and we've made sure, we've loosened off the truss rod, and we've retied it, and made sure the neck is absolutely straight. Now the neck is absolutely straight, and what we're going to do is, the next part of the job is, we're going to make sure that all these frets are level. We know the neck's straight, so we're going to make sure all these frets are level, because some have gone in a little bit deeper than others. So how I do that is, you can't see where you are right now, but what I do is I go across, Got a bit of rock there, you see, and I'm going to mark off every one that's high. That's high in the centre, it's all right at the front, it's all right at the back. So I'm going to mark off where it's high in the centre there, and I'm going to do that with red pen. And I'm going to do this for the whole of the neck. Now, I know, for instance, it's just rocking in the middle, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark red pen the centre of that fret. 
and I've already done it on quite a few frets I've been across the lot and I'm going to do the same again every single fret that's fine fine at that edge a bit high at that edge now I've already gone in and I've hammered all these in so I know and I've let rest overnight and I've hammered them in two or three times but I've let rest overnight and we sprung back I'm not going to hammer them again because they've all been done but what I'm going to do, determine is I only mark where the high so that's on that edge that's in the middle that's fine that's fine, that's fine, 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 high in the middle, already marked off, edge is fine, edge is fine, and so on and so forth. And what I'm going to do is I'll mark every area that's high in red pen, and every other part of the fret that is not high is, is fine, I'm just going to mark off in black. So say for instance, I've just got the middle marked there. Because it's only high in the middle, but the edges, I've got the middle done in red, I've got the edges done in black. And what I'm going to do is, this whole fret is fine, so I'm going to cover it in black. And this fret here, just on this edge it's red, but here in the middle and on that edge it's black. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all of the frets. And the red will determine where it's high, the black will determine where it's level. And what we're going to do is, we're going to go across with a levelling beam. This is a levelling beam, it's built perfectly flat. I've got 200 grit that side, which is quite coarse. I've got 400 grit that side, which is fine. And once I've marked off all the frets, I'll put the sanding beam on and I'll be moving the sanding beam left and right and I'll be sanding all of the frets. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to remove the black. Once I start removing black, then the red's gone down enough. And that's what we're going to do. And we're going to do it for the whole neck until we've got every single one of these frets completely level. Once you're completely level, I'll come off the coarse 200 grit, I'll go to the fine 400 grit. And what I'll do is I'll just go across a lot till the pen just starts coming off everything. Once it's off, I know that all the frets are completely level. And that's how we're going to determine, and that's how we're going to get all the frets level. Um, before I do that, I'm going to take off, I'm going to be taking off the edges of these frets because it's sticking out and I'm going to file with my 90 degree that's going to go on basically and I'm going to file off all these edges once we've done that we're going to go with the 35 degree one and what we're going to do is we're going to put that little bend just over the frets here I've explained how I've done it all before I've done plenty of videos on that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on with marking off all these frets and I'm going to get all ready for, to finish off a refret tomorrow it'll be a quick job for me um, because I'm pretty dab at it. I just want to explain about these zero dials. I've got the neck now strapped in and it's clamped to the jig. These steel inserts here will stop this, it won't move up or down at all. And I've zeroed out the two dials. If we get any movement at all on this off the jig, these dials will move. So I'm always looking to keep it on zero, zero. If these don't, because this moves in thousandths of an inch, it's a tiniest bit. And if we get any movement at all, these dials will move. Well, I'm going to determine and make sure that these dials do not move. It means the neck is absolutely straight all the way through. And once we've got all the, fret, all the frets done, we know then the neck straight, the frets in relation to the neck will be straight, and then we can look at recrowning them. Because when we flatten them, we, we, these tops are going to, instead of being curved, we're going to flatten them and we're going to put our curve back in them. They're all going to be the same height. So that's it. That's what I'm going to be blobbing on with today. Um, well, not today. I'm going to get them all marked up ready for doing that job tomorrow, I'm not going to work at all today. I'm going to get some guitars prepped, um, but that's it. And that's uh, I'll come back to this tomorrow, tomorrow morning when I get started on this. And um, I'll show you how I go on about getting these frets all level. And uh, that'll be it, so till then, be good, I'll see you soon. Right, hello everyone. Um, back on this Kramer Focus 3000 refret um, job I was doing, I've done the refret. Um, I know you can't see me now, but I wanted the camera at this angle. I've done the refret, uh, got all the frets in obviously, beveled the edges of the frets after we've all been hammered in nice and tight a good few times and pressed in. I've beveled the edges of the frets and I've leveled the frets going by going across with the uh, fret leveling beam. There are quite a few uh, high spots, I think they had about nine high spots along the whole length, so we've filed it all down. But what I did was I slipped with a file and I put a few extra grooves in these last few frets here. So what I did was I had to remove more material, more material than I normally would. 
I probably had to take off 0.1 of a millimetre, a tenth of a millimetre off. And what I've done is, we basically took more of the crown off than I normally would do, so we've slightly flat, flat, flattened the tops of the frets. And if you can see here, there's quite a wide, there's two or three mil wide of um, marker pen, which I'm going to mark them all up because I'm recrowning them. Now you'll notice the first eight frets there have no marker on them. And that is because I've recrowned them already. And I've polished them and I've took the pen off. So I'm going to show you how I do a recrown. And yeah, I know I've done this video, I've shown you this video before, and I've shown you how to do this. But how I do do this is I take the crowning file. And it's a three edged file, we're all the same grit on each edge, but each edge is ground flat look. And that means I can go across the fretboard without damaging the guitar. Now, if this was a customer's guitar, all these spaces, all the frets would be taped up, and we'd just have, well, not the frets, the gap between the frets would be taped up, and we'd have the frets exposed. And I do it, because it's my guitar, I don't need to do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go across with the file, I'm going to follow the grain, the groove. And as I do that, every subsequent stroke, I'm going to lean the file over and lean it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, until it's almost flat. I'm going to put that grain back, or that curve back. I'm going to just zoom in with the camera. I'm not going to show you all this, I'm just going to uh, show you where I am. I'm going to point at my finger. We're about there, I think we're close enough in there. And all I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the file, I'm going to go across, and I'm going to lean more into it as I come across. And all we're going to do is we're going to keep filing until we get a thin line on the top of that fret because we want as little string touching that fret as possible. I've come to the other side now, look. Just leaning in, leaning over, just removing a little bit of material at a time. Basically, that's it. Now I've got a thin bead. We've got just over a millimetre there. It means, because he's a three mil wide, we've got about a millimetre there. It means only the strings are only touching a millimetre of surface area, but we're going to even take it better than that. Now we've done that, we've got that curve back in. I'm going to go across with the uh, crowning file there. All I'm going to do is just a few strokes, backwards and forwards, nice and steady. There you go. And that now is removed material, we've got about half a millimetre thick of line straight down the centre. We've still got a black line there, meaning we've not taken any of the height off the frets. To show the frets are level, I'll show you quite easily, I know the level because I've checked them all. No rock anywhere, absolutely level. I've done the whole neck. We're level, so we know we've got them all level. So if we keep that black line on there, it means the frets are going to be level all the way across. That's basically what I'm going to be doing. Once this is done, to show I've got the fret done, all I'm going to do is just remove the black pen off it. And there you go, I've got one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine done. I've got 11 to go. All right, 11 to 13, 13 to go. Once this is all done, I will tape up the fretboard. And then I'm going to go, we're going to go for a high polish. And to do a high polish, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take four different grits of sandpaper. For 1000 grit, 1200 grit, 1500 grit, 2000 grit. And we're going to go across that way. Then we're going to go backwards and forwards that way with each grit going higher and higher each time until we get to a 2000 grit. Once we've got 2000 grit, it'll be highly polished. There'll be no scratches on there. And we're going to complete with the wire wall. I've also got the beveled edges just to take that edge off which I'll do with this file, we'll do a four, three or four stroke of there, really easy just to take any burrs off and then that'll be ready for going back on the guitar. So that's it, in a nutshell, nice and quick, didn't want to make this video too long so that's going to be it, this will be the end of part three of the video uh, I look forward to seeing you in part four where we're hopefully we're ready to get the neck back on, we'll rebuild the guitar and we'll get it all set up. Till then, be good and I'll see you soon.